Cure t-shirt? Is that yeah. it? Cool. Hello, so I'm here tonight at the Scottish Blockchain Meetup and um, joined by Professor Bill Buchanan, OBE and a bit of a blockchain expert. So Bill has been presenting at tonight's meetup actually. Um, and I, before I allow him to go home, I'm going to ask him some, a couple of questions about blockchain. So thank you for your time. Okay. Um, you're a bit of a celebrity actually. You're a bit of a celebrity actually in the cyber uh, security world. You just released a book. Can you tell us about that? I released a book because uh, crypto is the thing that I find most interesting. I, I love virtually everything about cryptography and encryption. It's such an intriguing area. It's it's amazing to have a, a real understanding of how you can secure things. You can you can enable so many things. You can improve healthcare. You can improve transport. Mm -hmm. You can really bring great benefits to our society because we have so many problems just now with the internet we've created. And what we really need to do is create a new world, a, a new infrastructure that's based on trust. There's a lot of hype around blockchain and I've been told it's a bit of a fad. Um, is it really useful and why? It's not a fad. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's really, it's almost impossible to really see how transformative this technology is. And I think the problem that we have as an industry is that the technologists understand and business people do understand how businesses will be completely transformed with things like serverless technology and with uh, blockchain and we have a long sell in terms of divorcing cryptocurrencies from, from blockchain. They can't exist together but on one hand we have Bitcoin, on the other hand uh, we have our distributed ledgers. So smart contracts, you touched on, the, on them tonight. Um, what makes a contract smart? You know, what is it about it that's smart? Well, the smart contract mm -hmm. is that uh, if I define something with a piece of code as an equation, then that equation is implemented as it's a mathematical formula. Mm -hmm. If I say that I'm going to double the number that you give me and give you the result, then that's our smart contract. Uh, I should be trusted enough to implement that and that is something that can be codified and we can translate it into English to say this is what is happening but at the, at the core is a piece of code that is, is trusted when it runs to, in, and to, to create that contract in, in a well trusted uh, way. And so I give the example of someone uh, taking a bet mm -hmm. with 15 minutes to go in a football match the, the online system said that the team who were winning 2-0, I think it was Huddersfield against uh, Crystal Palace, Palace yes. they were winning 2-0 with about 10 or 15 minutes to go of the match and the, the odds were 100 to 1 and the person bet £10 on that. The, the, uh, the bet came up and the person thought they were going to win £1,010 but they didn't because the online company said that it was a mistake. We're really sorry, <laughs> we didn't mean it to happen. And for us, that's not a citizen-focused system. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's still biased towards a business saying, well, we, we made a mistake. Can't but share like that, that much money. That's right. And, and to me, that smart contract should have been written to say, if I put my money on at that time, and you have said that this is the bet, then that is the contract and then when the referee blows the whistle if I can verify that that's happening and the score then a contract is enacted mm -hmm. and you can't back off. So if blockchain is so useful why is it that organisations don't really use it today? <laughs> well it's, uh, it's, 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 it is being used and it is being used to disrupt and and really it is a disruptive force. If you can say that rather than using email now, mm. let's use WhatsApp, you can do everything that you, that you probably do just now. I get overloaded by email, I get thousands of emails yeah, yeah. every single day and I can't really respond. Where if I now get sent asynchronous messages from my students, 
then I can have a trace of them and I can probably communicate. I can create small circles of trust and so on and I can make sure that I'm getting photographs from, from certain people and, and my family are in a certain circle of trust. So that is a disruptive nature uh, of, of blockchain that you don't do things in the, the way that you've done them in, in the past. Uh, currency is not done through some mechanism that you collect a transaction and you send it off to this infrastructure and eventually after a few days or so then it's approved on both the bank's mm -hmm. side and so on. With the blockchain world we say this is our trusted infrastructure and let's go and quickly understand, let's create a consensus, yep. let's agree what the state of the world sh should look like and that's a natural way of creating a trust infrastructure. Last question, and I will let you go and get a beer. Um, what do you think of the name Blockchain Beyonce? I think it's fantastic. I, think <laughs> I, w I recommend anybody to go and follow you on, on Twitter. Perfect. And uh, I'll be looking forward to some great insights.